six years ago now. I was this guy, illustrious, you know. I was working with a multinational then. Um, practically for a young guy at my age then, um, I, was, I was okay. I was satisfied with life. Um, the next thought that could cross a young man's heart, especially when you have a family and you're able to be the only son of the family, what will cross their mind is, oh, guys, it's time to settle down. All right, so, um, so I said, okay, let me pick someone, um, an old friend that we've known each other for a long time. That, okay, let's see how we can get this rolling. So um, we got rolling and then six months down the line, I had to travel. So on getting back, um, I found out that my supposed fiance was pregnant. At that point, it was a shock to me. She had proposed uh, a talk about celibacy, so which actually led to the stigma for us. When people hear you and you tell them that, oh, she said we should be celibate, and everybody's like, oh, she's definitely getting it somewhere else. And um, at the end of the day, she proved them right, kind of. She was six months pregnant. I was not happy because a lot of people felt maybe I, I was um, uh, impotent as a guy, you know, and the talks were on drawing, even in the church, talks were that, oh, it's because you could not do this, you could not do that. Who does that? This generation, who tells you to be said with and you decide to follow suit and then, then she even lied about it. So at that point, a lot of talks were ongoing. People, people were shouting, people were saying things, bad things about me, things I was practically, it got to a stage you were not saying it in hushed tones anymore. They were saying it to my face, like, and then, and I I'll just get back home, I'll just lock myself up in the room and I'll start crying. At the end of the day, due to that experience, I lost my job. But at that point, I knew I'd gotten to my breaking point. At that time, I tried to enter a relationship again. Or someone that told me that, try to enter a relationship, maybe when love, tenderness from, the, from someone else, maybe they would. You know, I won't lie to you, I ended that relationship on the 25th of December, 2019. And that was, it was that day I decided that I had to speak to someone because I had carried this grudge in my heart for like two years prior to that period. So I knew I had to speak to someone. 2020, I met a professional and I met him online. We spoke. But it was not physical, it was still virtual, and then even we've not met physically up to now. We spoke through almost throughout 2020, down right into COVID period, where it was always there, calling, checking up to ensure that I was good. Then he had prescribed some um, uh, ads that I see the doctor to ask for, some antidepressants and stuff like that. So I got some. Majorly, so it was 2020, I decided that I had to just speak with a professional and I was I was lucky I got one. I kept it a secret. I kept it a secret. Um, majorly because um, the my environment does not really allow you to talk that much. So even the pain I was going through I could not tell anyone. Most people really did not know what was going on. I had to be I was brought up to be that perfect boy. My family did not know. I did not tell them. Um, I think by the time I finally mentioned it, it was it was last year. Um, but last year I was already, I was much better. I was in a much, in a much space, more clearer space than who I was at that early 2020. It can happen to anyone, anybody, irrespective of your gender, your race, your position, even if you are the president of the country, it can happen to anyone. It is not okay to shut everyone out. And I wish people knew and recognized that there are people who would listen.